in for. Here's a fun fact. Out of all the guns I'm in possession of, either temporarily for testing and review or permanently, I bet my life, my personal security, that of my family's, more on Glock than any other. That's a true statement. Several reasons for it, really. But it boils down to how many locations I have Glocks placed throughout the Nut and Fancy systems. Sprinkled throughout the Nut and Fancy homestead, sometimes found in my vehicles, and these days on my person as I carry a Gen 3 Glock 26 and a Galco Classic-like shoulder holster. Kind of surprising, really, because I've shot thousands of rounds through the best combat handguns in the world, and I can still get excited about the Glock. You're looking at a touchstone for combat handgun design still after all these years, after many outstanding competitive options, many which I've reviewed here in TMP over the last four and a half years, and that is the Generation 3 Glock 17. That gun has a history here in the Nut and Fancy project. In fact, it is a cornerstone of TMP. So great was my enthusiasm on the Glock 17, at least the third gen, right, right, right. that it was one of the first detailed combat handgun reviews I ever did. August 2008 is when that series of videos posted. I called it, called it the Glock 17 reference standard. First types of videos of their kind. Sold thousands of Glocks through that video series. I know because I've talked to you guys throughout the years. But that was the Gen 3 Glock 17. Fast forward, at least from 2008, and here comes the Gen 4 Glock 17s. And I criticized the decision. I'm like, why are you going to mess with this pretty much perfected combat handgun with such an amazing track record, changing a key sub-assembly? Well, this is the video, at least here in the Nut and Fancy Project, where I will attempt to share with you my data point on the Gen 4s. Are they crap or are they worth owning? I was thinking about the best way to do this too. Do I just cover the differences? I think I'm going to do just an entire review on the Gen 4 Glocks and make it a single parter. That way the information is contained right here. It's up to date. And guys don't have to click through a bunch of videos like they did in 2008. So here we go. The key on the Gen 4s will be that talking point, right? Mm-hmm. By the way, notice the timeline of my review on the Glock 17. And actually, you're going to get a two for one. This is a Glock 17 and Glock 22 Gen 4 update slash review here in TMP. The timeline, though, was on purpose. I did, did not just come out with it in 2011. I had to get them, had to shoot them, had to spend some time testing a review. I'm not just going to jump out to the range, pop a few box of, boxes of ammo, and do the review. It takes time. So you're going to see the data as it comes at you. And again, it's just my data point. It may vary from some others. Let's get into it. Philosophies of use. I'm going to go light on this because you dudes have been watching my videos for four and a half years, right? Well, if you're new to TMP, maybe not. So I guess I ought to cover some of it. If you're watching this gun 
uh, this gun review, I should say, you probably already get it, that you are a patriot, you're a civilian, perhaps law enforcement sheepdog, and you are a supporter of the Second Amendment of the United States of America. God bless it, and I hope you're an NRA member and you contribute heavily to the NRA ILA. That being said, you have a reason, I shouldn't say a reason, but a right to defend your life and your property. A Glock 17 or the Glock 22, and for that matter, the 23 and the 19, this review will serve for those as well, is a great way to do it, either in your home, in your vehicle, or on your person. It is a defensive combat handgun. Depending on what you're doing and what your calling in life is, it might be offensive. Talking mostly to my military guys and gals there. That's the primary philosophy of use. Recreationally, I could think of a lot more inexpensive options than either a 17 or a 22 for that matter. And I'm showing you the Gen 3. I guess I ought to roll in the Gen 4s at this point. Here we go. Two to show you. These are the Gen 4s. These were the test beds here in TMP. Na -na 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 and OD Gen 4. Outstanding coloration. I just love it. Uh, not wearing the stock sights, not wearing the stock barrel. That's an LWD, that is Lone Wolf barrel in there. And those are Meprolite adjustable sights, so I can run an Osprey suppressor by Silencer Co. on this unit. I shot it a lot in its stock form, though. Enough to know. And then here comes the Glock 22 Gen 4. Both of these guns shot plenty prior to the review. Philosophy of use, defensive, perhaps offensive, combat handgun. There you go, we'll leave it at that. Maybe competitive as well. Either formal, informal, there we go, I'm just leaving it at that. Size and weight. Did I ever mention to you guys that the Glock is light? <laughs> I'm laughing, and if you're new to TMP, you probably will wonder why, <laughs> because I harped on how light the Glock was. In fact, after that video series, the reference standard, the following handgun reviews, at least combat style handgun reviews, I always refer to the Glock 17 pretty much. A 22 ounce full sized combat handgun. Still in 2012 and probably beyond, we don't see very many guns matching that weight. 22 ounces. That is an amazing amazingly lightweight. Why is weight so important? Oh, do I have to go into this? System, system, systems. What I always talk about here in TMP, it might be a concealed carry system like with me these days in the Glock 26. I do want a lightweight gun. I want it to be comfortable. It might be as an officer, a patrol officer, so it's in your holster. You're carrying about 22 pounds of gear on your belt can you really afford to carry a 40 ounce steel frame 1911? I don't know many guys who can. So we're cutting ounces whenever we can in most of our systems. Maybe in a home defense system, a vehicle system, defense system, weight maybe not that critical. But for me, it's definitely, definitely not a penalty 22 ounces and it's really the basis one of the bases, I guess, why I'm so enthusiastic about all of the Glocks. 1.18 inches in thickness is your Glock. Both for the 17 and the 22 I'm talking, and for that matter, the 9mm Glock 19, and, which by the way, I have a Gen 1 right here. Oh, dudes, there's my original Gen 1 1989 Glock 19 wearing a crimson trace grip, serial number FB821, never getting rid of this thing. I digress a little bit, but so what I'm saying is basically playing for both the full size 17 or the 19, and then the full size Glock 22 or 23, 1.18 inches, and it's a full length slide. I'm often asked by my friends, my subscribers throughout the world, hey nothing fancy, what is your favorite Glock? Um, I would have to go back to the philosophy of use discussion there and say what do you intend to do with it? If I get a lot of answers, which I usually do, and that is, well I want a home defense gun, I might occasionally carry it concealed, 
maybe in the vehicle, of course, legally, I'm licensed. I would say a full-size Glock 17 or 22. There's my answer, and there's lots of reasons for this. One, you're not giving up anything in weight. It's still extremely lightweight. You gain a lot in sight radius, more in velocity. It's easier to hold on target because of those things, uh, at least a sight radius. And it's more accurate for a lot of shooters. Now, I've talked with some of my buddies, some crew members, other folks throughout the years. They prefer the so-called compact Glocks, the 19s and the 23s. So maybe your mileage may vary. But overall, you're looking at my favorite models, the full-sized. To me, they can just flex into so many philosophies of use. And their weight, once again, phenomenal. And that takes us to firepower. On this one, and this is just like I said in 08, it has not changed for the most part because I'm doing a two for one. I'm doing the 22 and the 17 in this one. Uh, on the Glock 17, standard is 17 rounds. If you want a plus two base plate, you'll get 19 rounds. Here's a plus two base plate right here. This one is Pierce Grip that I have on it. I put in a Wolf Spring after that. And by the way, oh, I'm sorry, that's a 40 mag there. I'm showing you. Uh, by the way, on my 40 mags, I always highlight those with white paint so I don't get them confused. Do I have a plus two? I don't think I have a plus two 9 mil on the table. Sorry. Let's pretend it was this one, though. It looks something like that. You'll get 19 rounds with that. And then, of course, the Glock 22, the normal is 15 rounds. This one's loaded up with one of my favorite defensive loads, 165 gold dots. Wicked. That's a Gen 4 Glock 22 mag. And that's a 15 rounder. Notice where I got it loaded, by the way. 14 rounds. Because those mothers are hard to load to full capacity. And then if you're like me, stationing your Glock in a certain location for defensive purposes, maybe downloading isn't such a bad idea. Less fatigue with a magazine spring. Yeah. And I have one in the pipe, so I'm still running 15 rounds. If you go with the plus two base plate, either Glock Factory or the Pierce Grip, then you'll have 17 rounds with the Glock 22. Back in 08, I showed you these. Nah, 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 nah. The Glock 18 33 round mag magazines. They're outstanding. Very reliable. Love them. By the way, those Korean ones, what are they called? Those are actually pretty good. I've tested those. The Korean 33 rounders are pretty good. Um, but given the price difference, if it's really critical, you might want to just spring for the Glock factories. By the way, get them while you can. Political things sometimes change, and you might not be able to buy them in the future. So, sheepdogs, stock up. You know what I'm saying? So that's for the Glock 17. That'll crank it out to 34 rounds. That's 33 plus one. That is a lot. And then here comes another one. I think that's a 22 rounder. Factory magazine. It will stick out the bottom of the gun, of course, just like so. Firepower was another leading feature of the Glock. I shouldn't say was, it still is. There's a lot of great guns, the Springfield XDs, the Smith & Wesson M&Ps, various CZs, all types of other guns that get the firepower equation right. And to me, that's running around probably 17 or more rounds in a flush mounted magazine. I would say Matt Firepower is outstanding. One change on the Gen 4s, and I'm going to get to all the changes. Be patient if, if I haven't told you yet. You may have noticed it already, is you're going to have dual notches. So for your ambidextrous magazine release, if you swap it over, if you're a lef lefty, you'll have a way to retain the magazine. That's a Gen 4 Glock mag, and that is Firepower. That takes us to accuracy, and we're talking Gen 4 here. And the good news is there's not a lot of difference between the Gen 4 and the Gen 3 in accuracy, as far as I can tell. I'm going to start you off actually with a Gen 3 Glock 34 target to prove my point. This I shot standing. Check that. Standing 25 yards, Blazer 115 full metal jacket. I have one flyer right up here. But I was pretty happy with that group. That's hard to do. So that's what you can expect out of a Gen 3 Glock, more or less. Granted, it's a 34, a little bit longer sight radius. These are wearing some of my favorite aftermarket sights, the Heine Straight 8s with tritium inserts in it, wearing the Punisher skull in the back. Love that. 
This one's Duracoated by MissionSpecCamo.com. And then here we go with, I'm going to start off with a Glock 17. I don't have too many targets to show you actually because there's not much to discuss. Glocks are accurate. Glock 17 4 Gen Blazer, 15 yards standing. I did this in the windy desert up in the upper right. You'll see me doing it. That guy got wasted. Oh, dude. Right in the chest. Three shots. Yeah, 15 yards standing. I'm very pleased with that. That's out of this gun right here. Time for the Glock 22 to step on down. Same conditions, windy desert. This is in May 2012. Glock 22. Oh, I opened it up there a little bit. And that's, oh, that's why. 24 yards. And that's spear, full metal jacket, standing, windy desert. That's me shooting. Okay, I'm pretty happy with that. 24 yards, you bet. And then he took three in the chest there. Accuracy, therefore, that's all I got target wise. Uh, I'm going to show you lots somewhere along the way of practical accuracy on long range steel targets from actiontarget.com, the Evil Roy's. Specifically, I think we're shooting eight inch plates um, after Operation Red Skies and some other outings we did. On to ergonomics. And this is where things get better for the Gen 4s versus the Gen 3s. Now once upon a time, I came out with a video, and it has like a bazillion views on it now, and it's talking about my favorite Glock mods, and that was in regards to a Generation 3 Glock. In a nutshell, it went something like this. I would put on decal grips, shown here. I'd put on an elongated magazine catch, shown there, sanded and rounded to get rid of the sharp edges, a three and a half pound connector, an extended slide release, and I'd put on night sights if it didn't have, have them already. I might be forgetting some other stuff, but that's the crux of what I would do to Gen 3 Glocks. The Gen 4s actually have a leg up in ergonomics, and I'm going to start right here with magazine catch, and I love it. Someone may ask, well, what do you prefer, your old extended magazine catch that you rounded or the Gen 4s? Uh, I don't know if I have a preference between the two. There's my answer. They're both quicker to access. They're easy to find, especially under stress, in the dark, when you're scared, whatever. The nice thing about the Gen 4 is I don't have to put anything on. They already come with it, and it's going to save me time. Swappable from left to right, too. So if you're a lefty, you can swap it over. It's a time saver. I do like the enlarged surface area over the Gen 3s it is comfortable to actuate. And another thing that's going to save me time is the RTF grip on the Gen 4s. I like it. And this one they got right. Earlier versions on Glocks, and I'm sorry, RTF, rough texture frame. Earlier versions were a little bit rough and there were a lot of complaints about it. This one in my estimation and in my own shooting both with and without gloves is perfect on the Gen 4 Glocks. I wouldn't change it. I'm not going to put decal grip on this one, for instance, like I did with this one, because the side panels on Gen 3s were just too slick. They needed something, either that really awesome, uh, what do they call it, synthetic suede, I'll remember the name of it. Well, I annotate it right there, that stuff, or the decal grips. Squared away this is, you can see the texturing goes on the side, back strap onto the front. Sadly, we still have those stupid finger grooves on the Gen 4 Glocks. I seriously wish they'd get rid of those. But nothing fancy, they help you index the gun and you can find it better. Ah, You should know how to do that anyhow. You're just going to grasp until you hit the cutout portion of the trigger guard, right? High as you can in the web of your hand. What do you need these for? Every pistol you should index the same. I don't need finger grooves to help me with that. That's just basics. So great texturing and that takes us to another Gen 4 feature and difference it's actually five as I count them, and this is one of them. Interchangeable back straps. Hey, is that an important feature to have? Um, I would say generally not. Most of the people that I see shooting the Gen 4s that I've talked to are just running the back strap that comes on the gun. Now, if you have really small hands, you have really large hands, you can swap out the others and see if the gun will fit you better. But wait, there is a benefit to the Gen 4s, and that is this hump on the heel of the grip is less pronounced. 
and that is a huge benefit in my estimation. I don't mind the grip angle on the Glock that much. I do generally prefer a 1911 style grip angle. I can shoot both well. Sometimes I do mind that hump and it is just a little bit more pronounced on a Gen 3 Glock. So that's an advantage. Interchangeable back straps. And all you do to swap those out is push that pin out as per the instructions, slide out the back strap, put the other one in. And that takes us to, I guess, the trigger. Really no changes, at least ergonomically speaking, over the Gen 3s. It's going to pull about five and a half pounds. I usually put three and a half pound connectors in them. And it still pulls five and a half pounds after that. <laughs> maybe five, maybe four and three quarters, but it's not a huge difference. Um, still glad they have this, the square trigger guard. There's no changes to that on the Gen 4s. You still have the same serrations. The slide is the same. I'm going to show you the stock sights now, ergonomically speaking, and they're always this way. As long as I can remember, this is the fixed factory sights, non-night sight variety of Glock. In fact, I understand now, at least in 2012, they're not putting night sights on anymore. You got to do it. Not a big deal. It's pretty easy to swap them on. How about ergonomically resistance of the slide? Well, as far as I can tell, it's going to be harder to pull that slide back because, and we might as well cover it now, one of the big changes, this is a Glock 22, I'll just use this one. One of the big changes on the Gen 4 Glocks is the double nested recoil springs. Right there. Why did Glock do that? Why, why, why? And this was the basis for a lot of our criticisms, at least on this gun, the Glock 17. You're looking at a G22. <clears throat> the reason they did it on the Glock 22, and I'm kind of jumping ahead to reliability just a little bit, is because the G22s in law enforcement service had a problem with being reliable when you put one of these on it, a weapon light. They had failures to feed, failures to eject with a single recoil spring. So Glock said, well, let's do two for one. We'll go ahead and fix the Glock 22. We'll do a double nested recoil spring. The same kind we've had on the G26s and 27s all along. Heck, why don't we do it to the Glock 17 while we do it? <laughs> How about you don't? The Glock 17 third gen was completely proven. It doesn't need this. Now Glock will tell you, well, this, re you know, re uh, I'm trying to speak here. It uh, has less perceived recoil the double nested spring. In my shooting, we're talking ergonomics here, I would say that's probably slightly true for me and just the way I shoot. In other words, does the Glock 17 with a double nested spring shoot softer, less muzzle flip than the third gen with a single spring? Most shooters will tell you that it does, from my own perspective, slightly, but nothing marketable. Okay, so is that a huge added benefit going there with the Glock 17? I don't know. Just leave it at that. And then they say a longer service life. Mm, okay. I mean, how hard is it and how expensive is it to swap out a recoil spring at every 5,000 rounds? Not much. And keep in mind, in the Glock 17 third gen, and heck, for that matter, earlier generations, Glock first gen, there's guns out there that have 350,000 rounds through them that were still shooting reliably. And not just 17s, we're talking Glock 21s, abused, sand abuse, saltwater abuse, thrown abuse, still shooting good with the same recoil spring. Okay, so all of that's that. The, the long and short of it is, we got it. Double cap to spring for both models. Again, I kind of have to jump ahead to reliability in talking about this. And when they first put it in the Glock 17, they dicked it up. It was poorly regulated. And there were some issues, my understanding, I could be off on this, with the extractor too. So the Gen 4 Glock 17 comes out, not running reliably. Okay, FTFs, FTEs, guys are pissed. Glock doesn't admit any problems. Uh, and actually, we talked to him and shot 2011 here in the Nut and Fancy Project, and I'm sad to say that the representative there, Mike, really didn't add anything to the subject. I mean, I cornered him and said, hey, what's going on with Gen 4 Glocks? He's like, oh, they're running great. 
Now let's throw this in while we're here. There is a, such a thing as internet snowballing. Do you guys know what I mean? That someone will report a problem with this handgun, that handgun, heck, with anything. Knife, gun, backpack. And other guys who don't have any experience with that item will jump on board and say, yeah, man, that sucks. Especially haters of that type. So maybe there's some Glock haters that, yeah, I told you it's broke. And so this whole group thing starts. Next thing you know, there's a lot of disinformation out there on what is generally a small problem, but it's perceived as an extremely large problem. And that could have very well be the case with the Gen 4 Glocks when they came out. Did they have problems? Absolutely, they did. There's lots of documented evidence. To what degree did they have problems? I don't have the answer to that. And I think perhaps, maybe a little bit overblown, in some ways, that's exactly what the Glock rep was telling us. He's like, hey man, you know, it's just very rare. Fast forward, Glock instituted what they called, uh, what was it, like a recoil spring swap out, the spring assembly exchange program. In other words, a recall <laughs> for the 17. I don't think it happened for the 22. They got it squared away. Why Glock? We knew Glock would, but when Gen 4 Glock 17s came out, major redesign of a major sub-assembly they're at ground zero once again. The good news is the Glock 22 got the fix that it apparently needed and you're looking at it. Now they did some other changes too. They changed the polymer frame to accept this double captive recoil spring. Some minor changes to the trigger assembly so it would fit in the new frame. And now with a weapon light attached, by the way you're looking at field strip here. Got that knocked out. Any questions? Double check it's empty. Magazine out. Safe direction. Pull the trigger. Here's your takedown levers. Done. There's your four steel inserts in the polymer frame. Very reliable, very durable. One of the reasons for the accuracy of the Glock. Back to the Glock 22 reliability. Now reliable. And in my testing, I will vouch. Shooting hundreds of rounds through this Glock 22 absolutely reliable no problems whatsoever all types of loads so that's cool and apparently here we go the Glock 17 4 gen is also squared away at least now mid 2012 if you guys go out there and buy a used gen 4 Glock 17 you might have one of those earlier recoil assemblies in it and you might have to participate under the spring assembly exchange program which is no big deal all you do is get another one swap it in and then your problems are fixed how about the extractor and this is kind of going back to ergonomics a little bit that also functions as a loaded chamber indicator there have been some discussions on that being a mimmed part now and causing problems I haven't seen any of that and I don't think most Glock Gen 4 owners have seen many of that that's not to say there weren't some early problems on, but I just don't have, I don't know, reputable evidence access to me right now to say anything. I will say it ran great. Would I like that to be a forged part? Yeah, I would. I don't like that part to be mimmed if it's up to me, but it works. Works well. There you go. Ergonomics, I'll just leave it at that. Again, I probably forgot some important stuff I usually do. Durability and reliability, I think I've pretty much covered. I'm going to sign off on the Gen 4s right now, mid-2012. If you're thinking about getting one, get it. Get a new one. And I think you're going to be very, very happy with it. I don't think you're going to have any problems. Yes, it took Glock a little while to square away whatever problems they were having, apparently. Inevitably, guys will ask, well, what would you prefer, a Gen 4 or a Gen 3? Here comes a Gen 3, one of the nut and fancy clan. Gen 3 Glock 17s. Wearing a TLR3 weapon light, by the way. Trivia question, why is that taped with electrical tape right there? I did that for one review, actually, and this is all coated with, like, carbon from shooting it so much, and so for whatever reason, I just taped it. <laughs> by the way, it will get coated by coating it or covering it in electrical tape. You can just peel it off and keep your light clean if that's important to you. Stupid trivia. I don't know to answer your question. Uh, I feel absolutely safe and protected with a Gen 3 Glock 17. Now if you're talking Glock 22, I would definitely go with the Gen 4. Just in case you are going to throw the weapon light on. 
But between the Glock 17s, Gen 3, Gen 4, I would probably go Gen 4. What? Nothing fancy? How? I know that's a little bit surprising because this one, honestly, I'm sorry, that's Gen 3. Gen 4 does not have the track record in my estimation that this one does. I mean, the Gen 3 inherited the track record from all previous generations, if you were to ask me. I mean, all the testing that was ever done was done, I shouldn't say ever, but most of it with those high round count Glocks were done with single recoil springs, not the double captives. Now, it seems all indications are awesome for the Gen 4 Glock 17 that it's just running on all cylinders. It's amassing a great track record, but nothing can take the place of time when we talk about track records. I've always said that in my reviews here on the Nut Fancy Project. Time is the biggest tester because over a span of time, you're going to have law enforcement agencies all over the world. By the way, Glock owns 65% of that market. Use and abuse the Glock, and that's when problems will surface if there are going to be any problems, which, by the way, happened with first, fourth gen issued, I think. But that being said, it's a time saver for me to go with a Gen 4. Having shot it the way I've shot it here, this gun has, I don't know, 1,000 rounds through it here in TMP testing. I save time with the mag catch. I save time with the grip. That's a big advantage to me. Everything else I pretty much don't care about, uh, except for the slightly reduced hump. But interchangeable back straps, eh, whatever. For my hands, large size, I ain't going to swap them out. Eh, whatever. There you go, there's your answer. Liability and durability, I think we're on track. And that takes us to value. Remember I said this gun protects and defends my family, my loved ones. Heck, for that matter, my neighbors more than any other gun. One reason for that is value. That's right. I think Glocks are a tremendous buy. Let's take a look. I mean, I got a case here. This one is actually not from a 17. It's from a Glock 26. There's the price. $425 for a Glock. For the track record we're talking about. I'm talking about once it's fixed. There's a peace of mind for me personally putting a Glock in defensive service, knowing that the gun's going to fire, it's going to be accurate, it's going to last, stand the test of time. If it gets wet, it's still going to go boom, gets muddy, icy, it's just going to fire. Now, I want to be honest, and there's lots of other guns that I absolutely love that fall into that category. The SIG, the XDMs, on and on the list goes. But not all of those are $425, sometimes less, especially if you go with a used one. Value is tremendous with the Glocks for what you're getting, for the level of accuracy you're getting. For now, the durability and reliability and the track record you're buying into. And then, if we talk about accessories and versatility, dudes, what gun has more accessories than the Glock? How about holsters, sights, trigger options, magazines, magazine extensions? On and on the list goes. Lights, the Glock is probably one of the most, if not the most, successful combat handgun in the world, and because of that, there are a lot out there, and an accessory market for them is thriving. Well, heck, just check that out. Lone Wolf Barrel on this one. And that's an affordable, outstanding barrel option if you want to suppress your Glock, whatever it is. The accessory market, tremendous. Keep in mind, with your Glock, when you buy it, you're going to get the what I think is a very high-quality polymer case. I think this one's been ransacked. You're going to get a clean rod, stupid lock. I never use those. Teach your kids. Teach your kids gun safety. Yes, I lock my guns up, but primarily the gun children are taught cleaning rod and then the back straps are in there. I got them around in another case somewhere. There you go, dudes. Nut and fancy tabletop review on the Gen 4 Glocks. To answer the question, are they squared away or are they crap? Well, as of now, mid-2012, they look to be very squared away. Took some doing, but we're there. I still think it was stupid they ever put a double captive in the Gen 4 17s. I just don't get it, but it's done. We have to deal with it. And luckily it is shooting reliably. And so is that Glock 22. Get a 17, get a 19, get a 22 or a 23. You will be happy. And perhaps just like me, 
you'll rest well at night knowing that Glock is protecting your family. Thanks, dudes. or so, probably further. 